Hey, welcome to 49cc Scoot. My name's Brent. In the last video, I tested different slider weights and made the RC1 a little bit quicker. In this episode, I'm going to continue to try to improve the CVT with a Polini drive belt and high speed variator. A little while ago, Ryan Ott told me that there's a Polini belt that's supposed to be longer than the one included with the RC1's overrange kit, and that a Polini high-speed variator may also be an improvement over Melosi's multivare. I believe he got this info from a user on a Zuma Facebook group claiming that these things and a better exhaust would make the RC1 faster. Of course, as soon as I heard that I may be able to make the scooter faster by just using a belt and a variator, I rushed to ScooterTuning.ca and ordered the belt that he gave me a part number for and a Polini high-speed variator kit for Piaggio engines. If you need to grab some go-fast parts for your scooter or even stock replacement parts, you should check out our friends in Canada for great service and fast, affordable shipping rates. Plus, they support the scooter community and do things like helping someone like me with discounts so I can get more stuff to try out and share info about. Once again, that's ScooterTuning.ca. After the parts arrived, I started by checking the length of the Melosi 6115-668 belt that's the standard with the RC1 kit and the Polini 248.037.2. Unfortunately, you can't use manufacturer info to compare belt length reliably unless maybe you're only using belts from one brand because they don't all measure the same way. For example, an 800 millimeter long belt from one brand may be longer or shorter than an 800 millimeter belt from another brand. An easy way to do your own checks for comparison is to roll the belt across a straight, flat surface. I think this is a pretty common method, but to give credit where credit's due, I heard about this from the guys at Parts for Scooters that post on the 49cc Scoop forum at times. You'll need to make marks on the surface that you're using, so I lay out a piece of masking tape longer than the belt should be on the edge of my workbench so that I can put marks on that. I put one line perpendicular to the edge that will serve as a starting point for belt rolling. Then the belt needs a mark on its side, so I use the tire marker crayon because I can clean it off without much trouble, though it probably wouldn't matter much if you used a permanent marker or a paint marker even, and should wear off very quickly with use. Place the belt parallel with the edge that you're going to roll it on, and align the mark on the belt with the starting mark. Then carefully roll out the belt along the edge until the mark is facing down again. It's very important to take your time and keep the belt against the surface at all times and as straight as possible so you'll get an accurate measurement. I made another mark on the tape to correspond with the mark on the belt after rolling. I repeated the process to make sure the marks align the same way again. If the marks don't align each time, be more careful when rolling and adjust your process until you have a repeatable result. Now it's as simple as measuring from the starting mark to the ending mark to find out the belt length. The 248.037.2 belt came out to 32 inches or 812.8 millimeters for me, which I'll just round up to 813 millimeters, with a rating of 810 millimeters from Polini. Just a quick note here, if you wanted to be even more precise, you could use fine tip markers to create very thin lines on the surface and the belt so there's a little less room for error. I went through the whole process again with the Melosi 6115668 and no measurement is necessary to see that the Polini belt is indeed longer. My tape measure says that the Melosi belt is 31 and 17 30 seconds of an inch long or 800.9 millimeters. So it appears that the Polini belt advertised at 810 millimeters is very close to that, and it's longer than the belt that Melosi advertises as 815 millimeters. I also measured the width of each belt, and the Melosi belt came out to about 18.8 .8 to 18.9 millimeters with a 19 millimeter spec, while the Polini belt came out very close to its advertised 19.5 millimeter width. The Polini belt is roughly one millimeter thinner at about 10 millimeters versus 11 millimeters for the Melosi. That could help it ride closer to the center of the front pulley for a better takeoff ratio. Here's a look at the Melosi belt installed without the fixed half of the front pulley. 
This is a very easy way to see the full potential for low gear belt position. Of course a CVT doesn't actually have a set of gears like other forms of transmissions, but for me it's easy to think of the travel here as the low gear, like first gear on a motorcycle, providing the greatest torque multiplication for a low speed acceleration. If you were to do the same test with the fixed half of the front pulley installed, the drive faces may squeeze the belt up in the front and subsequently down into the rear pulley due to inadequate spacing. The Melosi belt is about 4.5 millimeters away from the outer edge of the rear pulley in this best case scenario. The Polini belt on the other hand is within a millimeter from reaching the outer edge, clearly showing more potential for a low gear ratio. In addition, the longer belt should also have a greater potential for high gear ratio and perhaps even more top speed. The Polini belt looked pretty promising, so I started out by testing it alone. I wanted to find out if the belt alone was a good upgrade, or if it should be used only in conjunction with the variator kit, and this way we can also see if the Polini variator is worth getting, or if the longer belt is responsible for any of the change that we may see. I installed the Polini belt with 0.4 millimeters worth of shims on the drive boss, just as I've been using with the Melosi belt. Being a half a millimeter wider than the Melosi, I'd expect to need that much more shimming, but there's limited room for spacing if I want plenty of spline engagement between the crankshaft and the starter pawl, so I tried it this way first. In this configuration, the Polini belt sat in a very similar position to the Melosi belt in the rear pulley. The problem is, it's actually a worse low gear ratio like this, because while the belt is similar in the driven pulley, it's sitting higher up in the front drive pulley than the Melosi does due to its width. I had 4.375 gram weights in the variator from the last test that I did while trying to find the best weights for the original setup. 4.5 gram actually worked the best there, but I left the 4.375 grams in place for now since I assumed the tune would change anyway with a new belt. I started off with a low throttle break-in ride and a cool down period. I do this with every new belt that I install so it can wear in to match the faces a little better and the heat cycle. Some belt manufacturers do recommend two heat cycles, but generally I just ride it fairly easy once and then let it cool down before normal use. Thanks to the change in low gear ratio, it felt sluggish as I first tried to leave a stop with a new belt and then woke up quickly as I started moving. That made it more difficult to simply take off normal or easy from a stop and would not be great for day to day riding. After a cool down, I went out to do some acceleration tests. It didn't feel much different to me than previous tests with a Melosi belt. The feeling wasn't quite the same off the line, but it seemed to pull well and it looked like the weights that were a bit light for the Melosi belt were actually working pretty well with this belt. I checked the data and my times were really similar to my previous best runs and RPM was peaking about where I'd want it based on past testing. I decided to try a little more shimming to see what happened if I could get the belt to ride in a better position for takeoff. So I added 0.5 millimeters to total 0.9 millimeters of shimming. That still wasn't enough to let the belt be free in the front pulley or to let it reach the outside of the rear pulley but I didn't want to risk stripping splines on the crankshaft if I shimmed the fixed half out too far. I headed out to do another set of test runs and found out along the way that movement from a stop was still a bit jumpy. The runs felt good to me though, and data showed that I was keeping in the power band a little bit better than before at low speed, but revving a little high for the best results on the big end. I could have spent more time trying different weights, but knowing that I had another variator and seeing how close it was to what worked well in the past persuaded me to just move on to the variator before worrying about really dialing it in. I don't think any amount of roller tuning would solve the jumpiness caused by the poor fit of the belt anyway. I think the spacing of the front would have to be gone over to see if less spacing could be used behind the variator to allow more shimming of the drive boss without running out of room for the spline section of the crank. If that could be done, then the belt could possibly be freed up in the front pulley for full travel, and that should solve the jumpy takeoffs while also taking advantage of the better low gear that the Polini belt could provide. I knew that getting into those modifications and multiple sets of extra test runs would eat up a lot of time, 
and I hope that the Polini Variator may be made for the wider belt and solve those issues more quickly. Plus, I had a car show coming up that I wanted to get to, so I moved on. This is the Polini High Speed Evolution Variator Kit for Piaggio Engines, part number 241.750. It comes with two sets of rollers, 3.8 and 4.3 grams, a coated drive boss, a ramp plate, shims, spacers, and installation parts, bushings for the ramp plate, the variator itself, a 28 kilogram contra spring, which is a little stiffer than the spring in Melosi's overrange kit, Polini grease, and a torsion controller for the contra spring. Then there are some instructions under here. Looking at the Melosi and Polini variators side by side, the Polini variator is a little thinner overall. This should help it make use of the wider belt. The ramps in the Polini are more segmented compared to the smooth transition seen all the way through the ramps in the Melosi model. The Polini variator has a non-serviceable seal behind the drive face. So if it goes bad, you have to replace the entire variator. I believe this was done so they could extend the drive face and the desired angle nearer to the center, prioritizing performance. The Polini variator is more than 2 millimeters larger in diameter than the Melosi, which could potentially provide better high speed ratios. It was at this point that I realized I forgot to order the matching fixed half, which should be Polini part number U244.0123. I checked the angle of the variator space and it's 14 degrees, which is the same as the Melosi fixed half, so I just use that. If you do get the Polini fixed half, it has a little bit different design that has splines in the fixed half instead of relying solely on the splines in the starter pole. This could be a good thing for more engagement area, but the design of the fan doesn't incorporate spots for a pin style holding tool to be used like the Melosi and many other units. It sounds like most people use an impact to install and remove the variator, but if you want to properly torque the nut, you will need to see if a strap wrench will work or come up with a custom tool. Ryan asked me if I could make a part on the lathe that would interact with the four tabs on the starter pole so that you could hold the variator in place that way, because he didn't forget to order the fixed half like I did. I made up two center sections while I was at it so I could keep one for myself. Basically, I just cut a ring on the lathe that matched up pretty closely to the outside diameters of the Paul's round sections and the tabs, and then cut slots to interact with the tabs. Ryan preferred a tool with a handle, so I knurled and cut some accents into a piece of rod and then welded a handle on. I like bolt-on variator tools better, so I welded mine into a piece of 8 inch thick steel flat bar, and then drilled a couple of holes that match up to CVT cover bolt holes. I started the installation by removing the clutch and Melosi purple spring to make way for Polini's torsion controller and spring. Two pieces make up the torsion controller. One is grooved to hold the spring and the other is solid. The solid piece goes in first, but pay attention because it has a flat and a rounded side. The flat side faces down toward the rear pulley. It was a very snug fit. The other piece goes on with a flat side down as well, but in my case it wouldn't fit over the torque driver cover. I may have been able to force it down, but the whole point of this setup is to allow this piece to rotate freely so the spring doesn't try to twist and bind, so forcing it into place, essentially locking it in place on the cover, wouldn't allow it to function. I chucked the part in the mini lathe and just barely removed any material from the center. But you could probably use a drum sander on a rotary tool or drill to make it work pretty quickly without a lathe. Then the piece went on with enough clearance that the contra spring could rotate with little resistance and I reinstalled the clutch. I ran into another issue when I was preparing to install the variator. The ramp plate that comes with this kit has a splined center, but the RC1's crank is not splined all the way down and needs a round center. This is easy enough to fix with a lathe. I measured the ID at the outer peaks of the splined area at just over 14.8 millimeters. Then I measured the Melosi ramp plate that I've been using at about 15.14 millimeters inside diameter. I thought it would be best to use the larger diameter like the Melosi since it worked well so far, so I chucked it up in the lathe and cut it to that size. 
Without a lathe, you could file or grind the splines out or perhaps even drill the center. You would need to be very careful though to keep the hole centered. Otherwise, you could cause fit and vibration problems. I also cut a taper into the ramp plate and then rounded and smoothed everything out to try and replicate the Melosi plate, but I don't think this is really necessary. Then the Polini plate fit over the crank with a little play, just like the Melosi plate. The ramp plate not fitting did make me wonder if I got the right kit. I heard there was a kit with a 12.5 degree drive face angle instead of the standard 14 degree angle that was designed for more powerful engines. I found Polini part number U241.749 which has a 12.5 degree face angle but it says it's designed for the Polini PRE engine platform and I can only find this in a 16 millimeter version where I would need a 14.8 millimeter version for the RC1. Pictures show the same markings on the ramp plate and the inside of the variator for the 12.5 degree kit as my kit has, so I assume they cast the same part and then just cut the face at different angles. Ryan later confirmed that the drive boss and ramp plate could swap into the 12.5 degree variator because he initially bought that kit thinking it was the correct one so he had it around to check. The only problem is that I don't know of a source for a 12.5 degree fixed half to match with the smaller inside diameter. Polini makes a 16mm ceramic version, but nothing in 14.8mm that I'm aware of. You could get an oversized 14.8mm centered pulley and then machine the face to the desired angle, but you're going to need a lathe or the assistance of a machine shop for that, and it will thin the pulley out a little bit. That's something to think about at another time for me, so let's get back to the install. Polini includes a garter spring in the kit, like you'd see in an oil seal and their instructions show that it should be installed against the rear of the groove inside of the variator. I cleaned the inside of the variator and then put the spring in place. Then I used the supplied grease to fill the groove in the variator and wiped off the excess once I was done. The kit comes with this tapered plug that's used to help the drive boss go through the seals more gently and to guide it through the spring. It gets inserted as shown in the front of the variator and then you push it through with the drive boss. I found that you still have to be careful when trying to push through the spring because it can still get out of place so you may need to help it out by repositioning the spring if you feel the drive boss hanging up. Once the boss was passed through, I cleaned off any grease that made its way outside of the sealed area and wiped down the drive face with alcohol to be sure there was no residue left over. Once again, I stuck with 4.37 gram sliders as a starting point before installing the ramp plate and its bushings. I put the assembly on the crank, but it looked like it still wouldn't be able to create enough clearance for the wider belt due to the lack of splined area showing, so I took it back off and removed the spacer that came with the Melosi overrange kit. I replaced it with two 2mm two thick washers from the Polini kit, which moved the assembly in about 2mm and provided more room for shimming if needed. The manual says to use 2 mm of shims for a brand new 19.5 mm belt, so I tried that first. That didn't leave enough engagement with the splines for me, so I tried 1 mm worth of shims instead. Once everything was torqued, it looked like the millimeter of shimming was enough to finally give me the full travel of the longer belt. I took a short ride to give the belt a chance in case it needed to wear into the new variator a little bit, and I was pretty sure the weights were too light right from the first time I hit the gas, but I did a few test runs anyway. did three passes instead of my usual four because I saw a farmer headed out to my uh, closed circuit test spot and I try my best not to disturb anyone while testing. Plus, I had no doubt already that I needed heavier weights. Draggy data confirmed that I slowed down from previous results, 
So I switched to a mix of 4.5 and 5 gram sliders to average 4.75 grams and then tried again. The weight still seemed a little light to me, but results showed times on par with some of my best results. I moved up to 5 gram weights and tried again. Looks like it got even quicker. I went up to 5.25 gram weights and did more tests. Better still, these are the best numbers I've ever seen on average and the quickest single run. Earlier in the video, I was testing the Polini belt alone. I concluded that it may be more advantageous if spacing were corrected to allow for more belt travel. But at that point, I was trying to do a group of mods before a car show and didn't want to spend any more time on just the belt, knowing that I had the variator and other parts to try. As I was getting this video together, now with less time constraints, I didn't want to leave it that way. I'd rather find out for sure if the belt provides much benefit for acceleration or not. I removed the Polini variator and left the 4mm of spacing on the crank that it uses instead of the 6mm spacer that's used with the Melosi variator. There wasn't enough clearance and the ramp plate guides hit the crankcase. I added a half millimeter shim and there was still light contact. Another half millimeter shim to total 5 millimeters did the trick and the variator could rotate without contact. I installed the Melosi variator and used 2 millimeters of shimming instead of the max of 0.9 millimeters used in previous tests. This way I had essentially the same spline engagement as before but with an extra millimeter of clearance for the belt. The belt wasn't free in the front pulley, but it was at least enough spacing to give me full use of the rear pulley, or very close. I tried it with different weights, and here are the best results, along with the best results from other setups, ordered with the quickest 8th mile times at the top. I still had the stiffer Polini Contra spring installed, so you may notice that the weights needed to be heavier than the first attempt with the belt alone. You can see that I didn't gain much with the additional shimming, but it does look like it was pulling better until the top end. I was having problems with my carbs starting to run out of fuel at the very end of some of the runs earlier that day, so perhaps that still had some effect on the 8th mile results, and to be fair, I was doing a lot of runs each day for all tests other than the last one. I hadn't done any tests for about 2 weeks prior to that, so most likely my launches could have been a little bit better than they were for those last tests. I think it probably should have outperformed the version with less shimming and less belt travel across the board, but it doesn't appear to be enough of an improvement that it would outperform the Melosi belt by very much, and the Polini belt and variator combination looks like it would be the winner regardless. The gains here aren't huge by any means, but takeoff is my favorite thing about riding tuned scooters, so I'm happy to see more than a half second quicker average 0 to 60 times with a Polini belt and variator, and basically two tenths quicker in the eighth mile. I don't think these results are going to have everyone running out to order the Polini parts right away, unless maybe you're drag racing or obsessively tracking data with a draggy and a spreadsheet like I am. It is showing potential for better launches, but my scooter would just throw the front wheel in the air if I tried to be more aggressive with the throttle on takeoff, so maybe those of you with better drag racing chassis or more skill would see more improvement than I am. I think this setup may be good for a higher top speed, but as I've told you all before, this thing is fast enough that I don't really care exactly how fast it goes. I know it can do over 80 miles per hour, and really that's just bragging rights to me. I don't ride it around anywhere near topped out. That about does it for this video, so please make sure you're subscribed and tap the bell to receive notifications so you won't miss the next one. If you've enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please give it a like. Thank you for watching.